So Birdie and I are <laughs> um, out here in the greenhouse. She's gonna help me pull our first garlic out here. Let's see. So I've been doing research on when the best time to, to harvest uh, hard neck garlic is. And what the, a lot of people say is the bottom three leaves die off. So here's the one that died, here's the second that's dying, and then here's the third. Um, and to make sure that there's four or five leaves above it that are still healthy. Uh, you'll notice I cut the garlic scape off already. Um, but I also have been reading on a few different blogs um, that, and I guess actually here's the first, here's the second, here's the third. I missed that. Um, I've been also reading that if you wait too long, the garlic won't have as much protective um, skin over it, and the cloves will start um, separating, which will make it not uh, uh, store as well. So I figured we're getting pretty close. If I'm looking here, and it looks like they all almost have have two, so I was going to pick one. The nice thing about doing one and as a test first and not planning to just harvest them all is um, you can see how it's going and then make your adjustment and you can eat garlic fresh. So a lot of people would grab this and pull. Um, you don't actually want to harvest garlic like that. You want to loosen the soil or dig from underneath without hitting the bulb um, and pull it up. So I'm going to grab a little trowel here. We'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back here with my trowel. So we've got the straw down. I'm gonna move some of the straw away. Make this easier to see. I'm gonna put the trowel way in, away from it, and start loosening, <laughs> in theory. And see if we can pull this, this guy up. Doing this one hand is kind of funny. Still in there. <laughs> this thing is glued right down. I planted these in October. Oh my goodness, look at this thing. Um, I planted these in October. Um, here in the greenhouse. Oh, it smells so good too. I'd say I think we're ready to harvest. Um, wow, I am so excited right now. Um, so that is waiting for two leaves to die and one to go yellow um, before harvesting. And it looks like I might not even have enough um, as much protective um, skin on it as I would want. Um, and these will actually not, uh, unlike the onions, they'll not go in right in the sun and get dried out. They're going to get brushed off, not washed, um, hung in clumps in a cool, dark, um, something like a shed or a garage, um, uh, something that doesn't get direct sunlight, but well, um, good airflow. Um, space for a good few weeks before you cut the necks off um, of them but oh my goodness I'm so excited right now these are gorgeous I'll show you here this is a pretty good size garlic head um, which we expected with the next size but um, it's very very exciting so I guess I am harvesting more garlic today than I expected. I thought we'd just have this one and um, we'd have some garlic today with with our cooking, but uh, I think it's actually time to harvest. So I'm going to take you through the greenhouse, what we have planted, what we're planting in there, 
and what's going on. Um, it's a Massachusetts Zone 5B. So our early spring salad bed is on its changeover state right now. We're uh, picking the scallions uh, very often, um, grilling the whole thing, um, which is just delicious. If you haven't done that, do that. Um, we're putting it in salad dressings and salads and all sorts of different things. Um, but we have so many onions um, out in the main garden area that um, these were just for early, uh, early eating. Um, some of the romaine is still going strong. I just picked this morning. So, um, got lettuce. I'm going to pull the kale. I pulled the collards, um, which ended up having uh, cabbage worms or something similar. Um, and it looks like they've transferred over to the kale. So I'm going to pull the kale. It's also um, shading out the lettuce. We have the 40% shade cloth on in the greenhouse. So um, uh, giving the lettuce a little bit more sun is actually not a bad thing in here. Um, the heat has been um, pretty high here. Um, we do have a, you, you won't be able to read it, but we do have a um, app with a thermometer and sensor. Um, right now it's 77.9, about a foot off the ground in the shade. Um, and then we have a high thermometer and, and humidity gauge um, that's saying it's about 82 degrees on 50% humidity. Last night, to give you an idea, around eight o'clock, it was around 70% humidity. Um, and I did not water this morning, so I might regret that later today. It was pretty hot. Um, but we do have the oscillating fan going. So in this bed, we're still debating what to change this over to. Um, I did put some bush beans here. Um, haven't grown beans in the uh, hoop house before, so that's gonna be interesting. I'm, I'm curious how they do um, overall. Um, I've got some growing out in the other garden as well, um, but pretty quick all of this lettuce will be coming out, um, the onions will be eaten, and we will be planting some summer crop in here. Over here on the left side was where I harvested the garlic yesterday morning. Um, so uh, we do a pretty fast transition on beds. Um, since we hadn't put compost in that bed for a year, um, we uh, topped it off with fertilizers, um, all-purpose organic fertilizers, um, and uh, some good, healthy, local farm compost that we had, um, had purchased that we're using for the other beds. Um, and just actually buried the straw, because um, that will mulch right in and compost right in. Um, this is going to be mostly jalapenos in this bed. Um, we've got the two strawberries in the front here. Um, but uh, I planted some of them last night and I was just really tired so I didn't finish. But I do have a, a Thai and a Serrano um, also in here. Um, but the rest of these will be jalapenos. Really hoping to get enough that we can smoke and um, dehydrate some to make moritas, which um, we use to make our, some of our absolute favorite salsa. Um, so I'd like to not have to purchase those and, um, so that'll be fun. We do need them to go red. So I thought putting them in the greenhouse will give them the longer, um, season. It adds about six weeks, um, being in this cold frame, um, on either side of the season is what we found. Um, to give you an example, we didn't pull the peppers, the hot peppers or the tomatoes until November 1st, last fall. Um, and they were still producing. Um, we we're just going to have some deep freezes at that point. Um, so overall, lots going on in here. We've got the jalapenos and the salad bed on the front that are in the change state. And then in the back, we have two main pepper beds, um, some hots and super hots. And then in the pots in the way back, I'll go over as well. We've got, um, some non, non hot items like anchos and guajillos that we'll be moving actually out um, of the greenhouse to give us a little more space. Um, they'll do fine out outside. Um, and then we've got um, basil, th regular um, sweet basil and Thai basil um, sprinkled into the beds as well as onions and marigolds um, and a little bit of alyssum. I 
think that's um, oh and I should note that we do have these two um, tomatoes because I liked having the late season tomatoes to, for me to be in New England and, and um, zone 5b and to have tomatoes be um, even the ones I pulled at November 1st we were eating fresh tomatoes and salsa um, up through like Thanksgiving which is absolutely crazy um, crazy to me anyways so um, so with that I said you know what let's do two tomatoes in this in this greenhouse so we're gonna let these these are indeterminate um, we're going to fix the strings but right now we're going to actually have them go up into the supports and then um, we'll weave them over so they just continue to grow we do need to fertilize um, we're due it's been about three weeks um, uh, especially the pots um, and we also need to do some pruning um, so we put these in I was just letting them kind of grow making sure I pruned some of the, the leaves that were really touching the dirt um, but other than that just kind of letting them uh, get accumulated into the greenhouse um, raised bed they've been in the greenhouse for about a week prior to me planting them in here majority of these peppers we did grow from seed and I will call out the ones that um, we purchased or um, traded we did a couple pepper trades this year which was fun um, as well um, before I get into it just so you are aware the left tomato over here this one is a big beef tomato um, and the right is an heirloom Cherokee carbon we have both of those growing outside and I started both of those from seed um, as well all right so I'm gonna go over most of these peppers if I can um, so we start with two death spirals we've got a seven pot Jonah that we traded for that had some disease issues early on I cut it way back and you'll see it still has some some pretty light leaves going on um, it is much healthier now um, I made sure I wasn't putting something with a lot of bugs or issues um, in the bed until it was it was clean um, so or at least we're good there um, then we have a couple Reapers and a couple ghosts um, which are doing pretty well we did buy two ghost peppers um, from a farm where I grew up um, up in Vermont called Honeyfields um, so um, we, when we got them we transplanted up, them up for about two weeks um, got the roots going um, bottom fed the water to get the roots really strong and then we planted them in here um, this guy is a seven pot primo which is really gorgeous and I'm loving how he's spreading out right now so I'll probably come back here and prune these leaves um, and continue the growth upwards a little bit more um, we've got sugar rush so um, this one over here is also sugar rush um, that's the one we traded from a local pepper guy uh, Ethan thank you um, it's a gorgeous plant um, he did a solo cup start and um, we traded for that and a Tabasco um, from once he started from seed for ones that we started from seed um, and then this is the one we had started from seed a little shorter and bushier um, and not as nice so great job Ethan side-by-side um, -side comparison um, uh, we've got some lava um, and then we've got um, prima tallies over here on the end back in the bags um, we've got um, peach scotch bonnets uh, Burmese birds yellow ties cayenne serranos um, guajillos, anchos, um, what else? That might be it for back there. Oh, habaneros too, I think. Um, and then up front here, we have, um, something is eating our fatalis, but, um, and we have some aphids, which we need to treat for. Um, so that's on the, the list as well this weekend. Um, the... Fatalis we we did purchase from um, Honeyfields up in Vermont also, and then this one is a um, seven pot primo over here. Um, let's see. When we get to this bed, we've got 
um, ties and Burmese birds, um, red ties and yellow ties in Burmese birds. We've got uh, peach scotch bonnets. Um, there's the, another red ghost in the back there that was from Honeyfields. We did two peri peris, which is great. Uh, here's the Tabasco that we had traded for from Ethan. You'll note the vermicompost in the back, I missing the, the top. We can't seem to find a white top for it. Um, the store only had black and we didn't want to overheat the worms. So I'm halfway started on the, the vermicompost in this bed. Um, we have habaneros, orange habaneros here. And then um, at the end, we've got an Anaheim, a um, cayenne and a super chili. The super chili is actually fruiting quite, quite a lot. So those are the peppers here in our little greenhouse. Just um, give you an idea. This greenhouse is uh, 16 by 12. Um, and, and we already think it's too small. Um, but uh, it's done really well. Jay built this from scratch last year after doing a lot of research. Um, it withheld the, the snow pretty well. We did... Um, come out here and um, and brush off the snow when it got too uh, too heavy. Um, but overall, it's really held up. It is uh, six mil greenhouse UV plastic. Um, the white PVC does have um, white tape on it so that it won't react to the plastic. That's something to be aware of when you're um, planning your greenhouse. So using the electrical conduit it would be better. Um, that won't react with the plastic. Um, and we do roll up the sides. Um, we have a place to cut out the other door and we probably need to do that this year. Um, add another screen door in the back. And then we have um, places on both of the door frames, front and back, to put in a box um, fan for ventilation. So, but having a little bench space in the greenhouse, I highly recommend um, as well. It's a little hard to get to the back of the bed, so sometimes we come in from the outside, um, which is probably my only real complaint about this. Um, and then this bed up here is a, I think it's a five by two um, space. This was the perfect amount to plant lettuce and kale and spinach um, back in March, um, and, and the scallions, I should say. Um, perfect amount for Jay to be and I to be eating salad almost every other day um, since I think it was like April 13th or 14th it was when our, we had our first salad out of the garden which is a fantastic for again for a zone 5b here in Massachusetts our last frost average day is May 20th to give you an idea so about just over a month early for a, a salad I've got a couple trays of items left for planting out in some of the beds we still need to install. So I've got the pole beans and a bunch of um, pickling cukes, a bunch of different varieties. We're going to try this year to see which ones we like the most. Um, and then I'll also be planting both um, from seed in, in the beds as well. And actually, I can show you. That's one of the beds that those are going to go in and we'll have the cattle panel um, arch over to a, a duplicate bed. And these will be installed down at the end. We cleaned up some of the mulch from last year and just kind of spread it out over here for the sitting area. Um, I sat here this morning for a little bit um, between tasks out here and it was just gorgeous. Um, at, you know, facing, facing all of these wonderful raised beds that we've been working so hard on in sunrise. It was just absolutely gorgeous. 
The um, tomato trellises are holding up really well. We did have one zip tie fail. Um, I think I just didn't put it through all the way, um, but it, it, we didn't lose any tomatoes, which is amazing. Um, and, and they seem to be holding and, and Jay went through and checked. We may look at um, uh, getting a better type of uh, zip tie that can with, um, stand the sun. Um, so we don't have issues in an, another couple months when these are um, big tree trunks. Um, I did pick out the lettuce out here as well today. Um, I'm gonna have some big salads for lunch, I think. So um, just walk through and, and show you. Our tomatoes are doing really well. I did add some of the, the next clips um, for the lower and lean method um, this morning and I did prune some of the lower leaf as well. As um, soon as I see any real blemishes, um, of course now I pruned them so you won't see as much. Um, I do actually trim them, trim them and I always trim to the lowest set of fruit. So no matter what, I'm trimming up to here on a plant. Um, so it's concentrating on the fruit growth at the bottom. And then depending on how the leaves are or if they're facing straight down, um, that's when I will prune something higher. Um, sometimes I'll even um, just prune off the very tip if I see some issues or egg, um, bug eggs on them. Our first nasturtium opened. It's the first time we've been growing these. Jay says he won't eat, eat them in salad, but I think I'll sneak them in and see. Um, <laughs> see what I can do. The barrage, um, this was a funny one. So I was all excited to plant barrage this year. And I'll go over here so you can see the flower. Um, because I, I read all about it, I thought I read everything about it, and I was all excited. Um, and it's a pretty flower as well. Um, it's great for, for pollinators. And it also deters tomato hornworms from laying eggs in this area wherever it is. So, you know, I would, stuff I read said plant it with your tomatoes. So I did. I put it in almost every tomato bed I had. And it turns out it's prickly. And nowhere did I read that it was a prickly plant. So I've gone through and pulled out all of the um, borage from all the different beds. And I've put them in pots outside of the beds um, to hopefully help deter these um, tomato horn hornworms, but also make it so that I'm not weeding around a prickly plant, which is never fun. So um, I thought that was really interesting. So hopefully it helps. Um, it does seem to attract a lot of bugs as well. Um, and it gets eaten real a lot on the leaves. So I've got mixed feelings. We'll see how it goes this year. Um, not sure if I might just plant some um, as like a wildflower around the um, around the area versus right in the garden. We did have actually really bad tomato hornworms last year in the greenhouse, which is interesting. So um, I did put a couple barrage um, in the corner there um, as well inside the greenhouse. I keep going back and forth about mulching these beds. Um, the compost does make a nice crust, but what I found was some of the stuff I started from seed in the bed was not taking off because the crust is like two inches thick. And so um, the seeds and the little seedlings weren't getting very good water. So I've been coming out here and, and doing extra watering on things like these baby beets or the little carrots. And I really need to weed these beds again. Um, so I went back and forth on, on whether I should mulch. Um, and I think I will um, maybe going forward. I'm not sure if I will do these beds, but I have been mulching as I've been planting um, the beds, uh, the newer beds we're, we're going through. Um, here this morning, I pulled out all the bok choy. It was bolting. I tried, we tried to put it in our salad yesterday and it was bitter. Um, any time of, of lettuce or spinach or something, a green goes, goes to bolt, it's usually not going to have good flavor after that. Um, so I did, um, pull it. So now I'm going to try to figure out what I want to plant in this space here around um, the tomatoes. The poppies have started to bloom. There's a, it's a mixed colors, which I'm really enjoying. Um, 
So I will let those go to seed um, and hopefully they'll start spreading. I might, I might help them, but start spreading them around um, the garden area. These rocks are planned to get moved. Um, it's kind of a mess over here right now and we've let the weeds go, go wild. Um, Jay really wants to put a gazebo here, um, similar to what Jess has on, um, on her channel, um, on their farm that they're leaving or homestead they're leaving. Um, but I absolutely love the idea, but also don't want it right here. So we need to figure out what, what location that would be because that will block the afternoon sun on the tomatoes in this bed, which might be okay. Um, since they do get, get a lot of sun, um, they won't mind a little bit of shade, but Mixed feelings, and so uh, just something we're thinking about. Last night I moved a bunch of the grow bags so it's easier to water and walk around, and I'm hoping to try to pull out the rest of these weeds. I need to get some gloves, so um, some of these weeds really bug me. So, um, <laughs> uh, And then all of this will get mulched eventually. Um, uh, we've been working with the local logger who's going to help us uh, get some. Um, carrots. This is, uh, I guess, the third growing of carrots um, that we had in a grow bag. They actually seem to grow faster in the grow bag, and I'm not sure if it's because they're holding water or if it's a different type of soil that I have in there versus um, the farm compost. I picked a bunch of summer squash today, um, uh, so uh, not much left to, on that plant to show you. But um, And then these are the pickling cukes. I do have um, cucumber bugs and potato bugs and everything on those. So I'm trying these yellow sticky pads. Since they're similar to yellow um, yellow flowers, they don't seem to attract bees or any of the pollinators. It's really mostly black flies, um, a few mosquitoes, and then I'm actually getting a decent amount of the um, uh, cucumber beetles or squash, the yellow striped, yellow and black striped ones on them so it seems to be working a little bit it doesn't work a great but it's helping some um, and we probably are going to have to put some de down at the very base of the plants away from the flower set to make sure that there's no no flowers down there but we'll do it at night um, to try to get some of the um the other beetles that are down further than um, vine borers and all that fun stuff i'm hoping not to deal with but i'm sure i will um over here, most of these are guajillos, um, and we need to fertilize them badly. They, I, uh, I don't think we've fertilized these since we planted them into the pots probably about six weeks ago, maybe. So we, we really are overdue. Um, we've got some beets and kale. I did put some spinach in here, but the kale really pushed out the spinach, it looks like. Um, and over here, we've got some mustard greens. Um, the thing about the mustard greens that we're interested in is less about the actual mustard green and we're hope, um, hoping they'll go to flower and we'll get the seeds so we can make our own mustard, um, which is kind of exciting. Over here, we've got some poblanos or anchos. I think these are um, trident variety. They're more or long and skinny. Um, and then you got the guajillo here. We've got um, Mexican sour little cucumbers and then our peas and we're actually getting some good peas now um you can start to see them actually growing in there um so i'm excited for those these were a late start because i had started them in the greenhouse and then i tried to move them because they didn't they were kind of wilting during the day um from the heat in the greenhouse so that was a pretty interesting failure of an experiment i tried I probably could plant them earlier in the greenhouse than I expected to be able to. Um, and uh, so I might start them much earlier next year in the greenhouse and see if I can get some early, early peas. But either way, they should should be good. They grow pretty quickly. Um, they love water. So again, making it easier for me to water them was, was important. Here's one of the lettuce grow bags that I didn't um, harvest this morning. Um, this is the onion nasturtium in cosmos bed. It's kind of a random mix, but got some good buds here. We've got the golden beets and another bag of carrots that are still um, growing. These are young. I probably need to start thinning them, but I like to wait a little bit. So when I'm thinning them, I actually get to eat some of them. Um, zinnias, we started from seed. Um, 
So hoping those will look really nice and, and help bring in some pollinators. Over here we've got our red chieftain potatoes. We do have some potato bug issues and I did put some of the yellow sticky pads in there as well. Um, they again seem to be only pulling in the, the bad, bad bugs. I've been checking them. Um, when I first put them up I checked them like every hour to make sure no bees got stuck to them. Um, and then uh, now I've been checking them at least morning and evening. Make sure. So as soon as I start seeing any type of positive um, bug, I will probably go and uh, remove them. Let's see. You guys can see this guy. This is probably an Asian lady be beetle. I'd seen some on it earlier. Let's see if I can focus it. Um, you can tell by, they have a lot more white on their face. Um, local ladybugs uh, have mostly a black face. Um, they, these guys have white cheeks. Supposedly they are pushing out our local population, which is not good. But they do also eat aphids, which is good. So we're definitely having a bad aphid year, supposedly because we don't have the ladybugs we need. <laughs> so, you know, it's a give and take deal. Um, it does look like somebody's eating some of the potato leaves. I don't actually mind. Um, uh, the po potato green part is not of a huge concern for me. They're very healthy um, and we do actually have some flowers. So for most potatoes, I've been doing research and I haven't really grown them much since I worked at the farm. But for, um, for these, what's gonna happen is they're gonna start all blossoming, which is great. Um, this was the first plant to blossom on the corner, which is actually perfect for this. Um, but we love new potatoes, which are the little tiny baby potatoes. They have really good flavor. The skin's really soft. You put them right on the grill. Um, I, you can do everything with them. They're amazing. Um, because we love those and we're growing quite a bit of potatoes, um, we are go planning on um, pulling this plant about two weeks after it blooms. So right now, since it's blooming, um, we should be um, uh, marking the calendar um, our target date to, to pull them. And we'll pull this one plant, we'll loosen the soil just around this one little corner, pull the plant, see how the potatoes are doing. Um, and then we'll, if they are the right size for new potatoes, then we'll harvest new potatoes from now until um, we want to actually harvest the rest of the crop um, and uh, harvest them just when we want to eat potatoes, which is uh, fantastic. Um, so you don't have to harvest everything all at once. Um, you can kind of harvest while you eat and then the stuff you want to store, you actually do want to wait until the tops start dying back. Um, so that's kind of fun. Again, these are Red Chieftain. Um, we are actually right on target in this raised bed um, uh, planting. We'll be at um, right around 65 days will be our new potato mark, which is exactly what um, the seed information had said um, for this species. Over here, these are um, dark red Norwood um, from the main potato lady. Um, they also have some potato bug issues and things like that. I thought I actually gave this bed more space, but this one looks more crowded, um, which is uh, maybe a type of, of potato um, variety. I also planted beans around the edge. Um, we'll see if they actually do anything. They look like they need some, some uh, loving uh, nutrients probably at this point. We haven't fertilized these beds much. Um, uh, I really just did some um, greenery. Uh, or foliage feeding um, a little bit. If you are not aware, this is what to look for for eggs. These are bad. Uh, you don't want these. So if you see these, pick them off. Um, they turn into the black and yellow striped bugs, but they go through this really ugly slug larva phase that I find absolutely disgusting. Um, so you wanna pick off pretty much any of those. Over here, we've got our bell pepper bed. This is a, an experiment on how much I could fit in 
one of these birdies eight in one raised beds. We wanted to fit as many bell peppers as possible. It's one of the vegetables we eat all the time. Um, and our goal is to fill, fill the freezer. 